What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 29 of the Roots of Success podcast. I am your host, Nate the Great Peterman, and today we have a very, very special guest, my guy, Tim Hardman. What's going on, man? What's happening, baby? Glad to be here. Likewise, man. You were just flying planes a little bit ago, weren't you? <laughs> I was. I was. Yeah, I started uh, flying planes that long ago, and I had a lesson this morning. So uh, I put up a little story on, on uh, Instagram where I was in there, you know, priming the thing, cranking it up. You see the little the little uh, propeller spinning. It. So it's a good time. It's a lot of fun. Heck yeah, man. I look, that sure looked like a lot of fun for real. And I know some of you guys might be wondering, you know, who is Tim Hardman? Um, I'd like a little bit of a, a background on him. Uh, so Tim Hardman is one of the top real estate agents and associate brokers at Keller Williams Realty in Atlanta, Georgia. Tim got into the business right out of college, quickly obtained his broker's license, built a team, and has been in the multi-million dollar club ever since. Looking for leverage, Tim started investing in the people to help them grow and succeed. He has started purchasing investment property and will be able to retire to never have to work another day in his life, all before his 30th birthday. Holy cow, are you sure I wasn't 50? Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. I feel like I need to be taking off my, my cape right now and stepping into the ring and starting to <laughs> For real, man, that's, that's insane, bro. Like just the, that introduction alone. I mean, I, obviously, I'm sure the audience and everybody would like to hear as well, like more so about how you grew up, some of your story, because I mean, man, you're not even 30. You said you're 28? 28. 28 years old and all of those accomplishments so far – I mean, I got obviously a lot of millennials that, that follow myself, and I'm sure that they would definitely love to hear like your story and how you got to, to where it is that, that you're at today, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to share. And thanks for the great, great intro, too. I, I appreciate that. So uh, sure. should we just go ahead and jump into it? Hey, let's get it, man. Right into it. Okay, cool. So my story, and uh, I've never really shared this this. Um, you know, I'll try to be as, as transparent, as vulnerable as possible. I feel like, especially now, I know I, I catch myself doing it all the time. I'll, I'll go on Instagram. By the way, if you're on Instagram, follow me, Tim underscore Hardeman. I'll follow you back. Hey. I, I catch myself doing this a lot, right? So I'll get on Instagram, I'll get on Facebook, and I see everybody doing all this cool stuff, like somebody I went to school with or one of my buddies is starting a new company. Uh, maybe it's a tech company, maybe it's a new business. And, and I'm constantly catching myself comparing my insides to their outsides, right? People are driving Ferraris and Lambos and doing all this cool stuff, taking these trips. And so I feel like now more than ever, it's important to, and people want some vulnerability. So I'll, I'll try to be as transparent as possible about the good and the bad and and uh, the wins and the losses along the way. So not a lot of people know this, know this about me, but actually I, I was born in a small country in Eastern Europe, it's called Belarus. Okay, oh, shoot. and when I was a little kid, uh, I was a crazy little kid, right? Just getting into a lot of trouble down there. I remember on my fourth birthday, um, me and my buddies, we, we'd go out and we'd buy uh, matches, right? Local bakery, and we'd run around, we, we'd be lighting stuff on fire. On my fourth birthday, I actually lit this giant dumpster on fire and started this whole commotion. And so ever since day one, I was, you know, like to get into a little bit of uh, a little bit of trouble. And so I was probably five or six years old. My parents had uh, always had people over on the weekend. They were hanging out at our house. And there was a, a newspaper. And in the newspaper, there was a little contest, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, enter to win uh, a trip or um, – uh, a green card, a visa to the States, right? So my parents were hanging out, drinking, having a good time. All their friends were over and they're like, hey, let's just, you know, just for fun, let's fill this thing out and send it out, right? So they did it. They sent it out to wherever it gets sent to. Uh, at the time, um, maybe a few weeks later, my mom was taking a trip to visit my uncle in Atlanta who's already living here in Atlanta. And so, you know, while my, while my mom's in Atlanta visiting, visiting my uncle, my dad gets this letter that says, hey, you, you're uh, uh, Claudia, who's my mom. She won this, this trip, this visa to the States, right? And so my mom just, just quickly got it together. She picked up a job. Um, she was uh, 
nannying and babysitting kids, right? She was cleaning houses just to make enough money to go back and then bring my whole family, myself, my sister, who's four years older than me, and my dad, and bring them here, right? So she saved up just enough to get a small little apartment. Uh, she got me and my sister a bed and, and uh, just a mattress for her and, and my dad, right? And that's all we had. And so I was uh, six, maybe seven years old. This is, um, this, is 19, this is April 1997. So just after the Olympics, six months after the Olympics in, uh, in Atlanta, right? And so my mom brings all of us over, right? And we're over here living in this apartment. And I remember my first memory, um, we, were, we were driving down the highway from the airport and I would see the lights, four lanes going one way towards us of, uh, of headlights, right? And then four lanes of the red lights. And I was like, man, look at all these cars. Look at all this, look at all these developments, look at all this infrastructure, look at all these people. It's crazy, right? Because I've never seen anything like that. And um, for some reason, something started going inside of me, right? So um, we moved here and uh, I think I was in second grade um, and had, didn't speak any English, right? I had maybe two months before school let out. So this is April 97 and I go into class. I don't know what these kids are talking about. I don't know what's going on. Right. I'm trying to uh, learn cultural differences and things like that. And I remember in the morning, I'm not sure if, if you had to, to do this, but we would stand up right before school started. We would face the flag and we'd put our hand on our heart and say the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, from, from that moment when we started doing that, I gained a, a deep appreciation for just how thankful I am to be in this country and have this opportunity. And I think so often we take that for granted of all the things that are available to us that we just, you know, kind of go day by day and we squander all these gifts and all these opportunities and the ability to make thousands of dollars out of nothing, to make millions out of nothing is just kind of, it's like normal now, right? This is not a normal thing. Anywhere else you go around the world, this is a very uncommon thing to have this much opportunity. So anytime, that's why I have this, this flag in my office here. Every time I look at that, I'm just filled with so much pride and so much gratitude for having the ability to do what I do now. It's unreal, you know? And I think sometimes I, I think back and I say, well, what would my life be like if my mom never took that small little step, that little action of, of just filling out that little contest, right, in that newspaper. And I believe that everything that we do are these small little incremental steps that are done consistently over time, over and over again, that lead to these huge results. And then we see those results, right, on social, on Facebook, on the gram, on Snapchat. And we're like, oh, damn, this guy's killing it. This girl started this overnight success. She's blown up. She's made a million dollars, right? Why am I not at that level, right? But people don't realize that there's so many small steps along the way that, that are really important at the time. They might seem trivial, but they're so, so important. So I'm just, man, I'm just so thankful to, to be here and have this opportunity. Uh, even to, to talk to you, to be interviewed on this podcast is, is incredible. So thank you for having me over. Um, so we came over here, right? I was uh, second grade. Um, in third grade, the following year, I started making friends with, with some of my best friends right now, right? We grew up in the same area. We started to play sports together, played football and lacrosse. We eventually went into middle school and, and the high school in uh, this beautiful city of Roswell, which is where I am at. At my, I'm at right now, which is uh, just north of Atlanta. It's about 30 minutes north in the suburbs of Atlanta. And so um, I hung out with these guys all the time, right? And I kind of carried from, from day one of lighting that dumpster on fire and, and causing ha havoc around the neighborhood, I carried that into, you know, into school and hanging out with my friends. So we were always getting in trouble, right? Throwing parties and, and uh, sneaking out of the house and doing dumb stuff. And, and so these guys that I grew up with, we had a really close circle of friends. These guys that I grew up with, we'd wake up in the morning, we would have 5 a.m. practice before class started at school, in, in high school. And so we'd play lacrosse in the morning, we'd work out, 
then after practice and before school, we would go play lacrosse some more after the coaches left. Then we'd go into class. We all had the same classes together. I don't know why our teachers put us all in the same classes. I mean, I'm still trying to figure that out. It, it's, I'll tell you a quick story. So yeah. uh, me and my buddy, my best friend, Jimmy Meadows, we, we, uh, <laughs> we took French together, French class since seventh grade or something like that. So I think it was our junior year in high school. He goes, hey, man, uh, let's drop French. Let's take Spanish. And then we get this thing called a dual language diploma, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's freaking do it. But, <laughs> and so, so me and Jimmy, we, we're, um, we're seniors in, in a class full of freshmen. And the teacher, like two weeks in, figured this out. And she separated us and put us on the two far corners of the room. And so we had these we found these two old desk phones and he would have one and I would have one in the middle of the class. I'd, I'd be like, bring, ring. And then Jimmy would pick up. He goes, hola, como esta? And we start speaking in Spanish and she gave us so much. Uh, we just messed around every single day doing dumb stuff like that. And so as we kind of grew up together and we had all these classes together and then after school we'd all hang out. We, our, all of our friends became pretty close. And I don't think anybody in school ever expected us to do anything at all. I mean, just because we were, we were kind of wild, right? <laughs> From there, we went, all of us, our whole group of the guys and, and girls that we hung out with, we all went to Georgia Southern University, which is in South Georgia. It's a small town. There's a bunch of cotton fields, nothing really going on except to right. go out to the bars and just party and, and, right. uh, and have a good time, right? And all these guys that I grew up with, we joined the same fraternity. And so when we did that, um, we had a really good time. I mean, we used to do, again, more and more things that uh, we were just trying to enjoy college, right? Because going from, from living with parents and going off on your own, we just kind of let loose. And so uh, I always had good grades. I never thought of myself as a smart guy, uh, but I just had the desire to win and, and to, to, to succeed. Right. So I always had good grades, and, but we partied all the time. And, and while I was at school at Georgia Southern in Statesboro in South Georgia, I uh, got into a lot of trouble. Right. A lot of underage drinking, um, just doing dumb things and that, that I look back on. I'm like, man, I wasted so much time through my college years just just partying and, and trying to have a good time. I wouldn't take it back by any means because I think okay. it propelled me to where I'm at right now and, and made me more thankful for what I have. And so. Um, sophomore year of college, I'm dating this girl and we got pretty serious and she was a couple years older than me, really, really ridiculously good looking. Uh, <laughs> she, she just graduated and she went on to get a successful job. Um, she was working in the, the healthcare industry. And mm. so I'm still back at school on my 21st birthday. I go down to Georgia Southern to celebrate my birthday, June 4th in the summer. And so this is after my second semester, my second year at Georgia Southern. I'm there. Um, in June and we go out and we we get a little too crazy and uh I come back to the fraternity house to go back to sleep right at the end of the night and um I wind up like falling asleep in the front yard of the fraternity house with, with my girlfriend right next to me on, on top of me nothing crazy was going on though right. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so apparently this is this is uh this is uh I don't recall this happening but apparently it did so um, Georgia Southern Police, they were driving down Greek Road, which is where our fraternity house was, and they see two kids, you know, passed down in the front yard of a fraternity house. And so this is, I'm recalling this from reading the police report later on. Oh, wow. And so um, this cop, I guess, comes up, and, and Jessica was my girlfriend's name at the time, rolls her off and tries to wake me up. And allegedly, I woke up, and I, and I just clock the officer <laughs> now i don't believe that because i'm a, I'm a pretty peaceful guy and you yeah. know, if i'm inebriated I, I wouldn't do that right but right. uh that's you know apparently what happened and so you get taken to jail uh i uh voluntarily left school before i was kicked out and then later i was banned from bullet county which is where georgia southern university is and all surrounding counties i couldn't even drive through um, and at this point, you know, I'm still dating this girl. She got arrested too, unfortunately. And, um, you know, now I'm back in Atlanta 
and I'm like, man, what am I doing? Like, you know, I, I've been having a great time, but this is stupid. And uh, all my buddies are back at school. They're still going out every night. Now I'm back at home, right? I'm, I'm basically kicked out of school. Uh, I'm living with my parents. I don't have any friends here. And at this point, I'm, as I'm dating this girl, Jess, things are starting to get a little shaky, right? And I think it's a lot of it was my fault because I started to get, um, I guess, jealous. You know, I felt like she was being so successful and, and she, you know, graduated and she got this great job and she was making money and all her friends were, were uh, you know, successful too. And, and I'm like, man, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything. I'm over here working at a freaking restaurant, busing tables for, for eight bucks an hour, you know? Wow. And, um, and so I was like, okay, I got to get out of this restaurant thing. So I get a job selling office supplies, anything you can picture, like, you know, the computers back here or the desk, office chairs, any paper that goes into a printer, big Xerox machines, ink and toner, anything you can picture that goes into an office or you can find an office depot. Uh, I was selling that stuff door to door. Our job was to door knock 60 businesses per day and sell them something, right? Anything. The way that it would work is I'd go out and have a territory. I'd drive around and, and stick to the right side of the road and go to every business in that territory and just knock on the door, meet the decision maker, hit them with a pitch, and sell them some stuff. Right? That was the, <laughs> that was the plan, right? And um, I was like, I was like uh, by the way, I get very uncomfortable you know, speaking to, to people. And this is not something that just started to come naturally to me. This is something I had to work on and develop. So all this bullshit that people say that say, well, well I'm shy, you know, I, I can't do it, or uh, I don't have the money, or I don't have the time, or well, you can do that because of this, but I can't because of that. That's bullshit. We can do anything that we want to do. If you want it bad enough and you write it down and you think about it and you say, I'm going to commit to doing this, I'm going to take the action steps to get there, you can absolutely do it. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad or whatever. You can absolutely do it. And so I, I developed this skill. I learned the script. I, I would sit there and I'd hammer this thing. And I'd stand in front of the mirror and I'd recite it, you know. Yeah. And, and, I would, and then I would practice and then I would drop my volume and I'd speak really slower to build a better rapport with people that speak slower. And then I would get like all into it and I'd start talking really fast, right? And I'd try to <laughs> mirror and match people. And, and I got really into this whole sales thing. And, and I got really good at selling those office supplies, even though the job was terrible. But the experience was incredible. That's where I learned about setting goals and just how important it is to write things down, visualize them, and how they become reality. I mean, the things that I wrote down at the time in my journal, things that I'd write and I'd put in my mirror in front of me and I'd look at every morning, I never would have thought in a million freaking years, they I never would have thought those things would come true. And they did. They did. Some of them would just happen naturally just because I looked at them. I didn't even have a plan. Um, one of the things, for example, like you, you mentioned earlier, is flying planes. I remember right. being a little kid, I'd, I'd pull up to that airport and I'd stand there and I'd look at these planes taking off. And I remember thinking, one day I'm going to do that. I'm going to freaking do that one day. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And this is when I'm like dead broke, right? Nobody. <laughs> and, and I wrote about that the other day, about a month ago, I was sitting there in the same spot that I stood several years ago. And I wrote about that. I said, I remember when I visualized this. I remember when I told myself that I'm going to freaking do this. And I did it. And so um, when, I, when I learned about setting goals and, and direct sales from this company, it opened up a lot more doors. I realized that, that at the end of the day, whatever we're doing, right, whether we're um, you know, a, a real estate agent, whether you're a real estate investor, maybe you're a, a dentist or a lawyer, or maybe you have an internet marketing company or you started a podcast, it's all a funnel, right? The more people that we can reach out to, right? The more people that we can reach out to at the top, the higher the chance of us converting a sale. So it's all in the action. So, so whatever the business is, all we have to do is just backtrack and see, well, how can we get in, in front of more people? For me at the time, it was just knock on more doors. So I was just a freaking savage. I would like run between <laughs> businesses. You know, you guys want some office supplies, right? right? And so eventually I came across this company that sold optics, military grade optics and scopes for, um, for handguns and rifles. 
and, and night vision units, the same stuff that the guys overseas at the time used. Um, I, I was selling to this company and they're like, man, uh, you know, we're looking for more salespeople. Have you considered switching careers? And I was like, well, I wouldn't really call this a career, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm in between college. I just basically got kicked out of school. Really? Um, and uh, I think at the time I was maybe 20, yeah, I was 21 years old. Yeah. And so I, I uh, start working at this company and as I'm working there, um, I was getting my training and it was one of the first weeks. And I remember uh, I was with these two girls that were teaching me the ropes. Um, and uh, it was late June and, and we got to lunch. We we're at Moe's where I was getting a burrito. <laughs> it was like 1130, 12 o'clock. And uh, I, I always kept my phone in my coat pocket, right? And I, and I would silence it so, so I wouldn't get distracted during the training so I could listen to them and pay attention and be respectful. And so my phone's blowing up, right? And I'm standing in line and paying for my burrito. And I look at it. It's one of my buddies is calling. I was like, no, put the silence button. I put it back in my thing. And, and it keeps ringing. It. It's all my friends, the guys that I told you that I grew up with, that um, yeah. played sports with. And finally, you know, we get our food, we sit down, somebody else is calling, um, and it's my buddy Louie. And uh, I was like, hey, hold on, and I told the two girls I was with, I was like, hang on, I just really gotta grab this phone call. So I walk outside, I pick up the phone, and it's Louie, and he's on the other line, and he says, hey man, did you hear about what happened to Tyler? And I go, yeah, I was with him, you know, last night, we went to see uh, his, um, that movie with uh, Cameron Diaz, uh, uh, Bad Teacher, or something like that. Right. And uh, I go, no, what happened to him? And, and he goes, uh, they found him dead in his apartment this morning in Auburn. Holy cow. And I was like, that's crazy, man. Like, what it, and it wasn't real. Like, when he said it, I asked him again, and he told me and uh, found out that he overdosed on prescription pain pills. My goodness. And, and I, you would never expect that from a guy like this. I mean, he comes from a wealthy family, a uh, really good looking guy, got all the girls in school, you know, played football, varsity football, lacrosse, star athlete, really smart, was uh, going to Auburn University. I mean, everybody loved this guy. You, you would never picture him getting involved in something like that. And that was a really big setback for me, right? At that time, um, uh, I started going through a, you know, my relationship with Jess at the time was, was really rocky. And, and we started to kind of break up and, uh, you know, managed to hold on for a little bit there. But from that experience, I learned uh, just how, how close a, a, an experience like that can, can kind of bring you and your friends and your family together. And so I'm, I'm kind of starting to slowly hit this low in my life, right? Again, all my friends are back at school. One of my best friends just died. Um, I'm back at home. I'm, I'm not making any money. I just feel like a freaking loser right now. And, um, and it's, it was hard, man. It was really hard. Okay. So I kept at this job. I was selling these military grade optics that I was telling you about the lasers and the night vision and all that stuff. And, uh, and my buddy calls me and he goes, Hey man, my dad, his dad was a big time builder. And, and then he went out of business in 2008, 2009. And he goes, hey, man, my dad got his real estate license and he hung it at this office and now I just got my real estate license. You want to come by and check out the office? And I was like, okay, sure, why not? I don't really have anything to lose, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I go and I meet with a broker and it was Denise and we sit down and she tells me about it. And she goes, well, yeah, you know, how much money are you making? And I was like, I don't know. You got me at the restaurant, I was making uh, $8 and, and at this at this uh, sales job selling these scopes and stuff. I was making maybe 500 bucks a week working part time. Right. And, and she goes, okay, so you can make a lot more than that. And I go, well, how does it work? You know, she goes, okay, so you sell a house and when you sell a house, you get a commission. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And, and it's 3% of the sales price. And she goes, so if you sell a million dollar house, you get paid $30,000. Okay. I go, wait, wait. Hold on, wait a second. And so I was like, 
you're telling me if I sell one house, I can get paid like twice as much as I'm making a year working for this other place? Because yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> and so, so I signed up. I got my real estate license. Um, I get my real estate license. And this is, I think, 2012, late 2012, something like that. And, you know, and it started out really slow. I remember my first year, I, I made like literally $200 the whole year. And it was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle because anything that I made, I'd take it and put it right back into the business. And I, was, I told to myself, I said, I will suffer right now and do whatever it takes right now while I'm not married, I don't have any kids, I'm not in a relationship. I'm in a relationship, but it's about to fall apart. I'll tell you in a second. And, and I was like, I will do whatever it takes right now to get through this time, reinvest that money and make it grow two times, three times, five times, 10 times as much over my life than just taking a, a regular, a regular pay. And that's what I did. I put it all back into the business. Anything that I got, I mean, I would, uh, it, it was, it was tough, man. It was really hard. I'd come home and I remember I was in such a low that, that there were times that I would just like break down and cry and not because I felt like giving up, but I had to do it to move forward, move past that wall and say, Hey, no matter how bad things are right now, no, no matter how bad I feel, whatever the circumstances are, it doesn't matter what's going on. I can visualize where I'm going. I have my goals and I know where I'm going to be. And this is just a step, step in the process. Just keep trucking. I write about this stuff every night. I'd write out things that I was thankful for, which really helped me because I tend to, I feel like a lot of drivers like us, a lot of uh, achievers like me and you and so many people that are listening to this, this episode here, they beat themselves up, right? We say, well, why am I not here? Why am I not like that guy? I've been doing this for a year. I've been doing this for two years. I feel like it's my time. I should be a lot further at this point. And, and we just, you know, we start to question ourselves and we say, oh, am I not good enough? Am I doing something wrong? It, is it time to give this thing up? Is it time to do something else? Is it time to get a real job? Right? That's the worst. Don't want to do that. <laughs> right. So I would write in this journal and I'd write things that I did well or that I'm thankful for that day. And some days, I mean, it was nothing. Like I would go to the grocery store, I'd be getting a sandwich and the girl at the checkout counter would smile at me. And that was my win for the day. Right? She just that little moment. It, everything was falling apart, Nate. I mean, it was, it sucked. It was, it was really hard. And so I get into real estate and I'm making my calls and I'd wake up uh, and come into the office early and I'd hit the phones for three, four hours at a time. And I'd be calling expired listings, which is when somebody lists their house and then for whatever reason, it doesn't sell. And then I would mm -hmm. call them and I'd say, Hey, if you're looking for a great agent to help you get the house sold, I'd love to help you get sold. And then the, the, goal is to meet with them and list the house and get it sold. And so one day this, um, <clears throat> this lady, this lady, she was a couple years older than me. She calls me and she goes, Hey Tim, I heard you've been, you know, consistently doing your lead generation, making your contacts. And I'd like to learn from you on how this whole thing works. And I said, okay, cool. Come in, you know, and it was Friday. It was, it was August 28th. It was Friday. And we were in the office. It was in a room um, kind of like this that I'm in right now. We're both on the phones. And when I make calls, I'll stand up because it helps me make better energy, right? And I just sound better and I, I feel more alive, right? So I'm standing up, I got my headset on, I got my phone in my pocket, and I'm dialing through the, the office phone. And so my phone's on, on uh, vibrate. And, uh, you know, it's probably uh, 1030, something like that. We're making the calls and my phone's blowing up. I pull it out, you know, I call back, my buddy's calling again. I was like, okay. Again, and I, was, I got this weird feeling of something, something's weird. Um, and, so, and so I was like, hold on. I take my headset off and I step outside and I pick up the phone. Um, and I, you know, hey man, I'm making calls. Can I call you back? He goes, dude, uh, Justin died last night. I was like, what? Oh my gosh. Uh, another one of my best friends, they found him that morning. He lived in Kentucky at the time. This is one of the guys that I grew up with, you know, as a kid, died from a, a heroin overdose. I was like, are you kidding me? 
Like, how is this happening, right? Right. Um, right around the time. Um, that's hard, man. That's, that was, uh, him and Tyler were my first two big, you could say, deaths that I experienced and that I, that I went through. And right around that time, um, I wound up also uh, cheating on this girl that I had dated for, for years at this point. And she found out the worst possible way, man. We were um, in Six Flags, which is an amusement park. We we're in a line. You know how they all cross over oh, yeah. like this, right? Yep. And we're standing in the middle of this line of, I don't know, it's, it had to be a, a few hundred people. In it. We're in, literally in the middle of it. I get a text message from this girl that I was with last night. I open up my phone. As I'm reading it, Jessica's reading it over my shoulder, and it just said some really nasty things. And I was like, uh, you know, I looked at her and she was like still trying to process what was going on. Grabbed her hand. I was like, hey, let's go over here. And, uh, and she just broke down. And, and that was it. That was like last time I ever talked to her. Holy cow. And, and so now I'm just like, what is going on in my life? You know, yeah. even though most of these things, uh, like the whole relationship thing, in where I was at, I caused that, right? But it's just, I was in the gutter at this point, and it was just bad, man. And it stayed like that for a year, a couple of years. And um, finally, at that moment, I told myself, I gotta get better. I gotta get better as a person. I gotta become better as a man. I gotta become better as a leader. And I gotta get my damn life together. Because if I keep living like this, I'm gonna wake up when I'm 60, 70 years old, and I'm just gonna be that guy that, that just worked in a normal job and did, all this bullshit that all our friends do and, and went out on, on the weekends and didn't get anywhere. and didn't contribute at all to the world as a whole. And so from that day, I said, I'm going to crush this. I'm going to become the best version of myself that I can. So I started reading like crazy, right? Started reading a lot of Tony Robbins and I started going to Tony's seminars and I started reading all the self-development, all the self-improvement books I could get my hands on. Think and Grow Rich was one that I read like 12 times, right? Listen to the YouTube version, another 10. And, and I remember I would sit there and, and, and Think and Grow Rich, it talks about visualizing your success, where you want to be, no matter where you are, where you want to be in the future. And whether, and I, I feel like a lot of people can take this away, and, and this is an action item that somebody can do right now, no matter how hard or, or how good something is right now, it can always be better. And we all have... Uh, these goals and where we want to go and the best way to, to plant that seed and I used to do this I would uh, I would turn off the lights and I would think about where I wanted to go where I wanted to 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 take my life what I what I wanted to look like what my image was how I acted in front of people um, how I would later be as as a uh, as a role model to others, how I would be a business owner, how much money I'd make, the trips that I would go on, what did those trips look like? Where did I go? What were the experiences that I'd want to have? Um, I would picture all these things. And just in my mind, it was like a movie that I was constantly playing. Then I started making these vision boards with all these photos. And I have several of them. I'll show you one day. And yeah. uh, it was, I mean, everything from some of the stuff on there was flying planes, you know, uh, buying the cars that I want. I just bought a brand new BMW. I'm looking at it right now. It's outside the hey. You know, um, all these things. And at the time I was like, how is this ever going to happen? But I'm going to do it. I was reading the book. And I was like, visualize, visualize. I was like, all right, whatever. This guy's the pro, Napoleon Hill. I'm just going to follow what he says. And so I kept doing that. And through these small actions and i again going back to this i believe that it's all in the small actions that we take we're not going to wake up tomorrow and start a billion dollar company it's just that's just not how it works right it doesn't just happen overnight even if it seems like it happened overnight to other people that's never the case but we got to take consistent action over and over again and we'll get there just keep chopping at that tree keep swinging the axe and eventually you'll get exactly where, where you're trying to go right and so i would do small things that started out with just waking up a little bit earlier right wake up at five next thing was like hey quit hitting the freaking snooze button right uh because it throws off my day and i was like okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a go right, <laughs> right. then i'd start working out in the morning and, and i remember i was working out one day and i was like you know what i think it'd be really cool to take on some kind of challenge that i can that i can overcome 
Um, and so I was like, I'm just going to run a half marathon. So I ran this half marathon. I was like, that's pretty cool. Then I was like, well, I did a half. I might as well do a full. And then so I did three full marathons. And then I was like, well, damn, I did three, three marathons. Might as well just step it up a little bit more. How about we do an Ironman? And so I did two, three half Ironmans. And then I did a full Ironman um, last November in, in Miami. And through things like that, right? And this is a good example of it. When I was training, when I, when I first had this thought of doing an Ironman, um, I was like, well, how? So an Ironman is a, is a triathlon, right? It starts out with a 2.4 mile swim in the ocean. Mm. Then right after the swim, after you swim 2.4 miles in the open water, you jump on a bike and you ride this bike for 112 miles, 112 miles. Ooh. And then after the bike and the swim, you have to run a full marathon, which is 26.2 miles. And you have to do that all in under 16 hours to, to make it through. And so when I, when I initially thought about that, I was like, that's unreal. I mean, I can't even run like two miles right now. Right? <laughs> right, but, right. But, but then I was like, okay, well, if I knew how to do this, how would I make this happen? So there's a few things I did. One, I looked at training programs online. And I was like, okay, well, how do I break down this massive goal into smaller action items? So I did that. Then I went and I met with a coach. This is, a, this is huge. Mm -hmm. This is huge. This is one of the, the pivotal things I feel like that has led me to success is being coached and mentored by other people that have been where I'm trying to go. So I meet with this triathlon coach. He was like a seven-time Ironman champion. And I was like, hey, uh, teach me how you do this. Yeah, I've never like, you know, I don't even know where to start, right? And he's like, okay, well, here's where you start, right? Tomorrow, you just wake up and you run a mile. And I was like, but Ken, I got to run a freaking marathon during this race. I don't think a right. mile is going to do anything, right? He goes, just go step by step. I'm telling you, over time, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. Don't try to do all these different things and try to start a business right away and then do all the marketing for it and then, and then do all the lead generation for it and then go on all the appointments and this and that. Don't try to take it all on. Just go a step at a time one by one the small actions the consistent things that lead us to the success and i did i followed his advice and he said now you know run two miles and i run five now swim 10 laps now swim 20 laps and i jump on the bike and ride five miles and i do all that together and i wouldn't i do that over and over again i got a few pictures on my instagram when i was training for this thing if you guys uh check out my page tim underscore hardman You'll see at one point I rode a bike. I mean, this is the things I had to do on a freaking Saturday. Ride a bike from the city of Atlanta to Alabama and then back to Atlanta. Yeah, it was nuts. It was like 121 miles, and there's a picture of me with a bike folded over my head. You should check it out. It's pretty good. Um, and, and through those experiences, it gave me time to think about all the other stuff that was going on in my life. And it gave me quiet time. I'd turn off the music. I'd never run with music or ride a bike or anything else. And it was kind of crazy. I mean, when I introduced that silence into my life and I had time to reflect on what's going well, what could be better, the things that I'm thankful for, um, it gave me so much clarity into the next step and the next step and where I want to go and where I want to take this thing. And so the past few years, they've been good. I'm not going to lie. They've been really good to me. Uh, but they've all had their challenges, right? And there's people in our office. We have about 230 agents in our office right now. And, wow. you know, a, a lot of these guys will come up to me and they'll say, you know, you're 28 years old and, and you seem to have made some success in a pretty short period of time. Uh, how do you, you know, how do you do it? Where do you start? And the key is you just got to start somewhere. You just got to start incrementally somewhere and take those action items to get to the big, the big success. And so um, through, through all that, um, there's still a lot of days that I wake up and, and it's hard, you know, maybe some days I don't want to get out of bed in the morning. I'm like, I just want to sleep in. Right. Mm. And other days, I, you know, you're tired and, and you make excuses about, well, I got to do this. I got to do that. And then I, I realized once we get to a certain level of success, we start to become a little bit comfortable. We're like, well, I got a house. I got a car, you know, I can go out to eat, everything's good, right? I can right. go on trips. And you're like, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. But there's always so much further that we can go, so much further. So 
I took on another challenge and, and I'll share this with you guys. And, and uh, what I'd love to do is in two years from now, we should do another episode and I'll, okay. I'll give you a quick update on this. So my yeah. challenge is to buy 28 houses in the next two years. And wow. the reason that I'm doing this and I'm making pretty good money uh, selling homes and, and uh, being an agent and a broker and building this team out. But the reason that I took on this challenge is that I realized right now I probably work 70, 80 hours a week. And not because I have to, but because I really enjoy it. It's, it's fun work for me, right? I can just kind of integrate everything. I'll go fly some planes. I'll go on appointments. Then I'll get back to the office. Then I'll go fly the plane some more. Right? Then I'll go for a run, run like four or five miles, blow it all off, come back and work on marketing at night, right? Wow, yeah. and I'm, 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 I'm truly enjoying it. And so this challenge, the reason that I took this on is because I realized that no matter what we're doing, and this is a, another good book to read called The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert mm -hmm. Kiyosaki. And he talks about going from, from being an employee, right, from just having a job of like when I was working at that restaurant, for example, or when I was doing sales for uh, that gun optics company or doing the door-to-door -door stuff. He goes from being an employee to becoming self-employed, right? It's kind of the next step, which is basically where we started business. Maybe it's an online marketing agency, digital marketing agency. Maybe you get into real estate and you get your real estate license, or maybe you start a house cleaning company or whatever it is that, that we're doing, but you're essentially working for yourself, right? Then the next step in the, the quadrant, the third quadrant, is to become a business owner, right? Which is basically where you step out of that job of, of doing the job day to day of me actually selling the houses, me actually running the ads for, for my clients, me you know doing the sales. I step out of that and I hire other people to do the work so that I can make sure all the, the wheels are moving as planned, right? And that's the fast way to growth, right? Anytime that we bring people and we leverage those people to help us get ahead. And then the fourth step, going from a business owner to an investor, which is where there's no people, right? You're not dealing with all the headache and the calls of people saying, hey, my thing wasn't good enough or whatever, right? You're not taking any of that. You're just stepping back. You're putting your money to work and it's paying you more and more with less time spent on task. And so that's why I took on this challenge of buying these 28 houses because that will allow me to retire in the next two years before I ever even hit 30. Right now I have four houses. Last night I put in a, um, an offer on a triplex, a three unit building, right? And so I, I laid out this plan and I said, yeah, 28, that seems like a lot. You know, two years, damn, right? Yeah. And, but I, I broke it down and I said, well, here's how it's gonna work. First year, I'm going to buy four. Check. Did that. Right. Then I'm going to buy some multifamily. Let's buy a few of those buildings. Right. They'll boost it up pretty quick. Then I'm going to take that money, those houses, I'm going to refinance them, pull that money out, and I'm going to buy a big ass apartment building. Right. Mm. Done. I'm retired, baby. I'm coming <laughs> to hang out with you. Yeah. Hey. And so, and so um, that's kind of the, the path. Right. We all start out as the employee when we all get our first job and start doing whatever. Then we become self-employed then we become the business owner and the ultimate goal is to become um, an investor to invest that money and have it work for us and so uh i, I think about this stuff and i'm like well what am i going to do at that point right i'm going to be 30 years old i'm going to be basically retired and never, never have to work another day in my life what am i going to do then and I, I think right now that is my short-term goal to get there first because i feel like it will open up so many doors for me to actually become creative and have fun with the work that i'm doing and really just keep grinding and enjoy the stuff and get lost. And maybe I want to start this. Maybe I want to start that. Maybe I want to do something else with uh, aerospace and, and technology and everything else. And um, I won't have to work anymore. I'll work because I truly desire and I want to. And I want to do that. And so I challenge everybody that's listening to this, no matter where they are in their journey, how far they've uh, gone, or even if they haven't even started, that should be an ultimate goal for every single person here is to become financially free. So you're never dependent on anybody else for your income. So you can support yourself no matter where the market is, no matter where the economy is, no matter if you're feeling sick or God forbid you get hit by a bus, your money's working for you and everything's going to be great. And it's coming in at that point. You can focus on whatever you want. You don't want to focus on anything, but going deep sea fishing, go for it. Why not? Right. And so, I'll just throw in a, a quick, uh, quick note. If any of you guys are interested in real estate, 
hit me up on the gram. Again, it's Tim underscore Hardeman. If you're saying, well, if you're curious about maybe how I started or the action steps that I took to get where I'm at right now, I would love to share that. There's nothing that lights me up more than helping other people achieve and become better and grow like this guy on my team uh he's actually in, in a lot of the snaps and, and uh, instagram stories that i'll post uh he started out he started as, out as an intern working for me 10 hours a week I was paying him 10 bucks an hour he had to uh address envelopes right right handwritten yeah. notes and i would mess with him so much mate one day i told him it was friday night we we're staying at the office late it's like 7 30 8 o'clock i said andrew i got a big big job for you tomorrow he goes what are, what are we gonna do and he always calls me, sir. I think it's hilarious. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, what are we going to do? And I go, well, I got this acre of land and it's all wooded. It has all these pine trees on there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get this land cleared and developed. And so we can sell it better and sell it faster for more money. And uh, he goes, okay, so, you know, what do you want me to do? And I go, well, what we need to do is before the loggers come, we need to get out there and we need to measure the circumference of all the trees on the lot, right? And so he gets out there Saturday morning, and I was with him, I was filming this, and he's over there with a the measuring tape, you're wearing a suit, right, measuring the trees. We did about five, and I was like, okay, relax, don't, don't forget about it. And so, but like with Andrew, watching him grow, I mean, he started out in college, I had no clue what he was doing, and, and he joined my team, and he started working with me, and I was like, hey, well, what are some of your goals? He said, I just want to graduate school. And I was like, okay, well, you're going to do that. That's easy. What else? He goes, well, I want to get into better shape. Maybe I'll, I want to run a marathon. I was like, okay. So we wrote that down. He's like, I want to buy a house, right? As soon as I graduate, I want to buy a house. I was like, okay, damn, cool. Yeah. Um, and so he started, we put together this plan. He started to follow the plan and uh, he's crushing it. He's, he's done with school. He's now a salaried employee. He's making twice as much money as all his friends are. He mm -hmm. bought his house. He's now investing in real estate. And he's like 23, 24 years old, right? And so it's possible. And so if you're curious, if you want to learn how to do it and you're actually committed to doing these things and you have the desire to grow, please send me a message. There's nothing, nothing that lights me up more than helping somebody and watch them grow. It's, it's like the best feeling in the world. I mean, I want to do that forever, you know? <laughs> 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 no, nah, for sure, Tim. Man, I definitely appreciate you, like, just, you know, sharing, you know, your entire story, man. Like, that's incredible, like, breaking down, like, the process. And, and of course, like, with the topic being consistent, I mean, there's so many times where, my gosh, man, I literally felt like I just went through a movie, <laughs> you know, like, just with everything that you've been through, all the trials, all the tribulations up to, to this point and seeing the growth uh, of you just as a person. I mean, you're 28 years old. You know, like, I mean, the life that you live, people, people be like, you know, 50s, are you, are you sure he's 28? You know, like people wouldn't think. And I think that's what really makes your story unique. And of course, with you being so into growing yourself, and I think that's something else, you know, for the, the audience and the listeners and the viewers to take in, because maybe, you know, not everybody is able to relate with your life. Of course, I mean, with your friends, like just sporadically, you know, not being there the next day. I mean, I never could, I've never been through that. I mean, obviously I've had family members that of course have passed. And of course that's a whole new take, but actually having like your homies, your boys, your, your, your family, you know, pretty much is what you call them pretty much not be there anymore. That's that right there. I mean, that, that's touching, man. Cause it's just, you never know when your last moment's going to be, when your last day is going to be. And, and you easily could have been like, man, I could do the same exact thing. You know, you easily could have like just fell off the face of the earth and just said, I give up. But I look at you and, and, and really, I respect you a lot for that. And I admire you a lot because you changed what could have been, you know, a downhill roller coaster into like a train, just keep plowing, keep going. And I look at that. And of course, for a lot of the young listeners that I have, you know, whether they're in school or whether they're, you know, they just graduated and, and they're looking for a little bit of light. I mean, look at Tim's story. Look at where, you know, of course, where he came from. You said Belarus? Mm -hmm. I mean, over there in Belarus and, of course, you know, coming to, towards Atlanta, being in Georgia and everything like that and seeing everything that you went through. I mean, some of y'all's stories aren't half <laughs> as, as compared to good old Tim Hardman. So, man, I just wanted to say I really, really appreciate you sharing that, man, for real. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think another thing that's really important that I wish – I could have told myself a little bit earlier 
is to have the right expectations. Oh. And again, I'm, I'm so just, I want it. I want it to happen now and I want it to happen quick. And especially like I mentioned earlier with all these things that we see out there on the internet of people succeeding and doing this, that, and other. And so just setting the right expectation for myself of saying, Hey, this is going to suck. This is going to be hard. I'm probably not going to make any money for a few years and I'm going to have to keep going. I'm going to be tested. There's going to be things that happen in my personal life in my business life. It's going to be tough and there's going to be a lot of rejection and there's going to be a lot of days that I'm going to wake up and go to sleep and say, why am I doing this? Is it worth it? Yeah. But, but what is, what is the alternative, right? The alternative is you live a basic life. You work a normal job. You can do what everybody else does. You go out on Friday and party on the weekend. You know, you wake up with a, a terrible hangover. You don't know what you're doing the next week, right? And you're just barely getting through life. And so if I could go back and I could tell myself, hey, expect this. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be frustrating. It's going to be hard. I'm going to have to work my ass off double of what everybody else is doing. I'm going to have to do that but expect it and it's going to grow incrementally and patience is the name of the game. And I know Gary V says it all the time. I'm not a patient person, but I'm having to constantly remind myself, Hey, step by step. Did I get better today? Good. That's a good thing. Congratulate yourself. Celebrate. Wake up the next day. Do something else to move you forward. It's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. Mm, no, for sure. And, you know, I think, I mean, social media, obviously, is an amazing toll uh, for, of course, yourself and myself. And, you know, I've had this conversation a couple of times with the guests on the podcast. And, you know, I asked them, and I'm sort of curious, like, what your perspective is. Um, what's your advice to, to like, a, a young, maybe it's a teenager, right? Because, of course, a lot of them look up to these guys that are on social media, right? Or maybe they're in college and they're still sort of, you know, warped around other people's lifestyles, Right. What would your advice be to, to looking at the kid that, man, this dude has a Rolex. This dude's got like a, a fresh, um, you know, Audi, right? Or maybe a Mercedes Benz or something. Or I mean, if they're doing really well, they got a Rari or something, right? But it's like, what kind of advice would you give to somebody like that in terms of getting caught up with, oh, man, I think, man, if I follow them all the time, I'm going to be successful just like them. But what I mean by follow, like they're, they're following them 24 seven, like they have post notifications on, right? They get emails whenever they, you know, uh, post a video on YouTube or something like that. What, what would be your advice in terms of, of actually staying on track and having that tunnel vision? You know what I mean? Yeah, really good question. And I had, that's something that I struggled with for, for a minute. And I couldn't get past it because I would, I was almost like addicted to seeing what everybody else is doing because I, I thought of them as somebody that's successful. And if I follow their footsteps and, and post the pictures with this and that, then that's going to lead me to where they're at. What I had to do, um, I had to go deep inside and say, well, what do I really want? And, and one of the things that I really had to do to block out the noise is I deleted all my social, everything. I deleted my Facebook, I deleted Instagram, deleted everything, deactivated it. I stopped reading the news. I stopped listening to the news, turned all that garbage off. I stopped reading any kind of magazines about other people. I stopped gossiping about others. You know, it's, it's always like enticing. Like, oh, did you hear about this person doing that? And I would just walk away from those conversations. And I said, I need to shut everything else out because I'm not strong enough inside right now to focus on myself. I'm not strong enough yet. I'm not strong enough to block out the Raris and, and the Rovers, right? I'm not strong enough to, to not get pulled towards that because I love that stuff. I mean, honestly, right. mate, I love making money. I love fast cars. I love nice watches. I love mm. airplanes, you know? I want it all, I do. That's just how, how I am, right? So to me, I literally had to step back from all that stuff and I say, that's great but that's not where I'm at right now. Right now I need to focus on me. The, the main thing that I recommend doing, and there's not a, a one piece of advice, there's not one thing to do and, and you all of a sudden get here. The main thing is just to focus on yourself 
and start listening to podcasts. They'll help us get better. Start listening to um, audible books. Start reading books. Start researching stuff online on self-improvement. Get yourself together first. You know, quit chasing girls. Quit going out drinking, doing all this dumb stuff. Quit worrying about what everyone else is doing and focus on you. Go deep inside, shut out all the noise, get rid of the social media and just get in there and, and visualize where you want yourself to go and then create that person that you want to be. That's all you got to do. I know it's a lot easier said than done and it's going to take consistent action as I mentioned before, but you got to start somewhere. Mm. No, that's so true. The power of visualization for sure. Seeing who you are. I mean, obviously that has been a big part of, of your success and in, in early on with where you you're at today, visualizing, you know, who you want to be, right? Even if you're, you're getting ready to walk into a restaurant and maybe you're introverted, right? And you're just like, man, I don't know about this, man. I, I don't want people looking at me. I don't want, I don't want none of this, right? You go in there and, and you already sort of have the confidence in your mind and it's like, boom, you, that guy, you, that, you know, girl going in there, like you have your power suit on, right? You already know what your personality is going to be that definitely can do some justice. Even, and even myself, like um, dealing with, cause I'm, I'm naturally introverted. Of course, a lot of people wouldn't believe it, but it's like, I've worked on that. And with what you just said to him, with like investing into yourself, doing, you know, obviously podcasts, um, sharpening your emotional intelligence around people, right? Doing meetings, reading books. Most importantly, like you said, having a coach, having a mentor, having a community of like-minded people that aren't gonna like bring you down and, and, and like hash you out like, oh man, like what, what are you doing that for? You know, like people that are encouraging, that are holding you accountable, people that are going to be like, yeah, Tim, that, like exactly, like that's exactly how you do it, man. Now what's your next step? What's your next goal? What's your vision? It's like, and it makes you think in a way that a lot of people that are sort of a little bit mediocre or average, they just, they, they can't even fathom that. And if they, if they can, it just is a complete joke to them. Man, I, I really appreciate you sharing that, brother. <laughs> there's, a, there's a pull, too. Something starts to happen when you start to focus on yourself and get better as a person. The people that know you as the old person start kind of making fun of you and, and questioning your decisions and actions, right? And they'll try to pull you back down, right? Mm -hmm. If you go out every Friday and Saturday night, and, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to quit going out for one year. I'm going to quit right. drinking for one year. People are going to say, hey, man, why are you not coming out with us? You know, what's wrong with you? Right? And, and you start to doubt that decision. And so just stay strong through that. And, and I, I heard this one time uh, right when I got out of school. And then, and then I've read this several places ever since. But it said, we're the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I had to get away from people with those mindsets that they were just not doing anything with their life. I had to drop them. I had to get myself around people that were successful, that were helping me, that were congratulating me when I was doing the right things to get ahead. And then uh, coaching kind of evolved. That was the next step afterwards. Right now I have two different coaches. One is a real estate coach. Another one is, is like a life, um, life coach through Tony Robbins. So I have two coaches right now. And uh, it's been it's been incredible. I mean, they're the people that look at me and they say, hey, you're doing good here, but don't be blinded by this. And they kind of show me the other side of it. And they say, well, if we want to get to this, this step here, here's how we get there. And they hold me accountable. And there's nothing better than having a coach or a mentor, somebody that we follow that we're close to that has not only gone to where we're trying to go, but can also teach us the way of how to get there and keep us accountable along that way. Mm, no, that, that's so true, Tim. I, I definitely want to be respectful of your time, um, to say the least. And of course, like the, the value that you dropped today, absolutely incredible, man. Um, where, where on social media, I know, you know, you plugged your Instagram. Um, what are the social media outlets that you use the most? Maybe you have a website that you would like people to visit you from? Yeah, for sure. So you can hit me up online at www.timhardeman.com. That's spelled H-A-R-D-E-M-A-N, Hardeman. Uh, mainly I'm on the gram. I was, I was pretty active on Snapchat. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, I post a lot of stuff that we do around the office. I post my day-to-day -day stuff like me uh, making calls and going on appointments. 
us fooling around and shooting off fireworks in the parking lot when somebody has a closing. Us shooting hoops, that's right. Uh, you can see my little basketball hoop right there. Right. Um, and so it's kind of like an inside look of, of uh, my life and what I'm doing. And then also I'll post some motivational stuff in there as well. So hit me up on Instagram, Tim underscore Hardeman, H-A-R-D-E-M-A-N, and check out my stories. And what I'd love for you guys to do is send me a direct message. Even if you don't have a question or anything else, just shoot me a message and say, hey, I saw you on Nate's podcast or I heard you on the podcast. Or if you do have questions, whether it's about real estate or business or just self-improvement, um, hit me up. I'm here to help. Again, one of the, the most important things to me is to watch people grow because it's just a fulfilling thing to me to watch somebody pick up what you shared with them. And if they take it, they run with it. And they create a better life as a result. Mm, that's so true, Tim. I'll for sure uh, attach the links in the description below. And in every episode, Tim, I always have the guests sort of end it, not just on a good note, but I like to call it an execution note, right? I know you dropped a lot of tangible steps, a lot of actionable steps today. Maybe if it's, maybe it's something you, know, you want to rephrase, maybe it's something completely new. But for that one last thing for the listener uh, listening right now, what is one execution note that you would like to leave them with today? <laughs> I would say if you want to create a big life, go and buy this book. It's called Think and Grow Rich mm. and read this thing. And when you read it, use it more as a textbook than just a book that you blaze through and then you close the cover and forget about it. And some of the exercises in there are going to be a little kooky, a little weird, right? but just do them. You know, set your ego aside and do the exercises and it will help you visualize your success in the future and where you want to go. And then from there, once you have that vision, you'll be able to create that roadmap and succeed at the highest level that you want to go. Um, do it. Think and Grow Rich. It's a great book. Mm, no doubt. I can definitely, uh, I'm a testimony of that as well, Tim. Definitely. Once again, brother, I really appreciate you uh, being on the show, dropping the value. And uh, as always, man. Hey, we'll for sure be in touch. Nate, you're the man. Let's go, baby. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>